Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So continuing on with my beginner's guide series. So today's video I'm going to be sharing with you a beginner's guide to historical fiction. So I did a historical fiction recommendations video uh, back, I want to say in 2015. So you can go, this is like part two I want to say. So I'll link it up in the cards down below. Up in the cards and down below so you can go check that out. But I have a couple, I have six books here to share with you that I think a lot of you will really enjoy. So these are books that I would recommend if you're trying to get into historical fiction. These one I think you would re really enjoy. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. So this first book is one that I ended up reading rather recently and it is The Secret Keeper by Kate Morton. And this is probably by far one of my top favorite books within my top three. And basically this follows uh, like a dual storyline between past and present. So Laurel is 16 years old when she witnesses her mother kill someone on who comes to her door on her front doorstep and that has haunted Laurel for basically her entire life and it kind of she had never told any of her siblings about it she's just been like sworn to secrecy about it but that all changes when her mother is on her deathbed and is kind of reliving these things she gets introduced to um, she kind of finds a picture of her mother and someone called Vivian who has ties to her mother's like who her mother killed um, so she kind of is on covering the past and this kind of flashes back between the past and present so it goes back to the past following World War II and kind of uh, Laurel's mother and just everything that she was going through but I really like this it also has kind of a mystery aspect to it as well but also showcases what life was like on the front or during the blitz during London like World War II and just kind of the bombing and just culture what life was like for the women who lived at home and surviving like the bombings from the Nazis so I think this book did a really good job it also has a really good twist and like mystery aspect to it so this is like a multi-purpose book because it covers a lot of different genres in it as well but I think this is a really good historical fiction one because if you're trying to get into it because it doesn't like thrust everything on you it does a good kind of it dips into really good aspects of it and it's not overwhelming so this is like a really good one that I think a lot of people will enjoy it was a five out of five stars for me I really enjoyed it and the author did did a really good job of seamlessly weaving in between like the 1940s and like present day she did a really good job it was very seamless and it wasn't choppy or anything so it's fairly good it is a big book she does write in like paragraph format so it does take a while to get through um, but it is well worth it and I highly recommend I think a lot of people will really enjoy this so yeah so you'll notice there's a theme here like most of these <laughs> I'll say five out of the six of them are World War II based sorry that's just what I like to read a lot of that's like an interesting time like time period for me to read so this one is Sarah's Key by Tatiana de Rosnay and this follows another kind of dual storyline between past and present so basically the story kind of follows a woman named Julia who is an American reporter and she's kind of uncovering something for the anniversary of like basically when the Nazis rounded up the Jews and she kind of gets really fascinated by the story of a girl named Sarah and just her time and she's a 10 year old living in France right around the time when the Nazis kind of invade themselves into France and just all the changes that she's going through when she's getting captured by the Nazis because she's Jewish and just how that impacted her family and how these two storylines though years and years apart kind of intertwine so this book was really really good it is very sad I will say like it is heartbreaking it will make you cry but the author does a really good job of making it impactful and meaningful um, which I think is really important it does showcase kind of parts of World War II that I wasn't necessarily afraid of. I forget the term of what it actually was called when they rounded out, rounded up the Jews in France and like the, just kind of that, I forget what it was called but there was a term for it and then just kind of life in the concentration camps. It was just like heartbreaking and it, I don't know, it was just, it really, like it really gets you in the heart and I think this is also a good one just because it's split between past and present. So it's not so overwhelming as I said but 
she does a really good job of also seamlessly weaving in past and present so it doesn't feel choppy so i highly recommend that you check this book out as well it was very good so this one also this is the one that doesn't take place during world war ii and it is the girl you left behind by jojo moise and it takes place in world war one so off by like 20 years 30 years but that's okay so basically it follows another dual storyline so in france um in 1916 Sophie is forced to open her kind of in to the Nazis and she's forced to cook them dinner every day and while she while the Nazis are there the main commandant becomes obsessed with a painting that her husband painted of her and it kind of leaps to a deadly obsession and it kind of goes spirals out of control from there and then flash forward to present day we also get introduced to Liv who is now the owner of this painting and she doesn't really know the history of it until um it basically it's kind of the woman in the white where they claim it was stolen by the nazis the artist like the main artist's uh, family and they want to get it back so as she's uncovering the past behind this she's kind of learning more and more about sophie who is the girl in the painting and it's very similar to the woman in white if you're familiar with that movie um but i loved like the world war one storyline in here like the author did such a really good job of making the storyline believable i really cared a lot for the um like sophie and her family and what she was going through and just like the choices that she had to make but i did find the first part of like the present day to be very choppy and hard to get into it because i felt the writing to be just a little bit lacking on that aspect but it does kind of pick up towards the end but the little ending's a little bit unbelievable but um i really enjoyed it it is very gripping um so if you're a fan of me before you this one might be a good one to go check out it was fairly good so i highly recommend it as well so this one is also kind of like a duology and it is the codename verity duology by elizabeth wines so the first one is codename verity and it follows two friends uh during world war ii so there's maddie who is a fighter pilot she flies the plane for the royal air force and then there's julie who we find out in the beginning of the novel has been captured by the nazis in france and she is kind of like we don't really know much about her but she is forced to recount her story her friendship with maddie and this book was just so moving it's really unique too because it's written as it were like journal articles the first part of it is a little bit hard to get through because she's talking about different planes and all that stuff but in terminology for planes which is a little bit i'm not familiar with it so it's a little bit hard to get through but this book is so moving it is really like i said with between the secret keeper the nightingale and then this book top three books all time ever like it is very moving i cry there's aspects of this book that i have like i'll show you like that are highlighted you can see there like underlined like this is probably a book that's going to stay with me for a long time and it just really is a showcase of good female friendship and just women's role during world war ii which i really liked and then also kind of the sequel i guess you could say to codename verity is rose under fire it does have ties to some of the characters in codename verity but the main aspect of this book is it follows rose who also flies planes um for the americans i will say and while she's there her plane ends up being captured and she gets sent to ravensbrook which is basically the only female con female only concentration camp that the nazis had and what was unique about this concentration camp was that they had they did a lot of medical tests on women and rose ends up being intertwined with the rabbits who were the women that um were basically tested on that's what they were called and it really does showcase what camp culture was like because i've looked into this and just kind of it kind of does a really good job of showcasing what life was like in a concentration camp and the author does weave in some real historical people into this as well so that was really neat to kind of how she kind of mixed in between the fake and like the fiction and the real life so it was really good this book is not as good as codename verity but it is also very impactful and i think a lot of you will enjoy codename verity and rose under fire are ya and i'm not really a big fan of ya but these kind of lead towards the adult side to it so i highly recommend even if you're not a big fan of ya i think these will still be very good they are um 
they are pretty intense for YA so I was pretty surprised about that but yeah this book I think a lot of people will really like this duology in particular and just kind of how it showcased life in a concentration camp and also kind of continue on with the concentration camp theme I have Lilac Girls by Martha Hall Kelly and basically this is one where it's also follows a two non-fictional storylines so woven into one that was fiction so it follows basically four women one is herda who was one of the few real women who actually was a um nazi who worked at a concentration camp called ravensbrück which i mentioned before and then her paths um then we also get introduced to caroline who is a new york socialite who we don't really know what her role is in here until very later on but she does play um a big role with kind of sending care back hair packages to french orphans during the war and then who was a real person as well and then two sisters who are from poland and then get sent to ravensbrück where they kind of are basically become rabbits so this book um, it is a little repetitive I was familiar with Raisin Ravensbrook just from Rose Under Fire so there are some themes and elements in here that were very similar but overall it was really good I love how it tied in all of the women's storylines in particular the real women Herda and Caroline their stories storylines in real life did cross so it's really neat to kind of read from their perspective and then the author's note did a really good job at like explaining like what parts she embellished on but for the most part it is pretty good I thought she did a really good job this was her first book so I think this one will be like very impactful and very similar to like Codename Verity and the Nightingale where it showcases women's like side of the war and I like how it showcased different aspects that women had either they were Nazis themselves like the unknown heroes of the war and then the victims so it does showcase very many like very different sides of the war war and different perspectives so this one is really good as well because it's very eye-opening and it makes you really question what you would have done in that situation so that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what some of your favorite historical fiction books are and so yeah don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and i will see you guys next time bye guys